Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how electrons are shared in covalent bonding. You should then be able to draw diagrams to show covalent bonding. We've already seen that ionic bonding happens when a metal atom reacts with a non-metal atom. Remember that the outer electrons are transferred from the metal atom to the non-metal atom. Ionic bonding produces ions, which are atoms with a charge. Ions have the electronic structure of a noble gas, in other words, a full outer energy level. In this video, we're looking at what happens when non-metal atoms bond together. This is called covalent bonding, and we're going to start by looking at a very simple covalent molecule, which is the hydrogen molecule H2. So, what does this formula tell us? Well, it tells us that we have two hydrogen atoms bonded together. Here's hydrogen on the periodic table, and we can see that hydrogen is a non-metal element. This shows a hydrogen atom, and as you can see, it only has one electron. Now, this energy level can hold a maximum of two electrons, so this hydrogen atom needs one more electron to achieve a full outer energy level. In the case of a hydrogen molecule, it achieves this by reacting with another hydrogen atom. So, here it is. You can see that in this case, I've drawn its electron as a cross rather than a dot. Don't be confused by this, they both show an electron. So, the two hydrogen atoms overlap their energy levels, and they share their electrons like this. Now you can see that both hydrogen atoms have two electrons. In other words, they both have a full outer energy level, just like a group zero noble gas. By sharing a pair of electrons, the atoms have formed a single covalent bond, and here it is. Scientists call this diagram an energy level diagram, and you could be asked to complete one of these in your exam. Another way of representing this is called a dot cross diagram. This only shows the electrons, not the energy levels. Here's the dot cross diagram for the hydrogen molecule. Again, you could see this in your exam. We can represent covalent molecules in an even simpler way, and this is called a stick diagram. Here's the stick diagram for the hydrogen molecule. This single line represents the single covalent bond. In other words, the shared pair of electrons. You will see stick diagrams a lot in chemistry. OK, so that's the hydrogen molecule. Let's move on to a slightly more complicated molecule, and this is the chlorine molecule Cl2. Here's the element chlorine in the periodic table, and you can see that it's a non-metal. An atom of chlorine has got 17 electrons in total, which means that it has 7 electrons in its outer energy level. We know that because it's in group 7. This shows two atoms of chlorine, and you'll notice that I've only drawn the outer energy levels. That's because only the outer energy levels are involved in covalent bonding. You can see that each atom of chlorine needs one more electron to achieve a full outer energy level. They can do this by overlapping the outer energy levels, forming a single covalent bond like this. So that's the energy level diagram for the chlorine molecule. Here's the dot cross diagram. And finally, here's the stick diagram. OK, we're going to look at one final small covalent molecule. This is called hydrogen chloride, which has the formula HCl. As we've seen before, both hydrogen and chlorine are non-metals, so this is a covalent molecule. Now we know that hydrogen has only got one electron. Chlorine's got 17 electrons, so chlorine's got 7 electrons in its outer energy level. I'd like you to pause the video now and see if you can draw the covalent bonding in hydrogen chloride. OK, well, here are the atoms of hydrogen and chlorine. Both need one extra electron to achieve a full outer energy level, and they do this by overlapping their outer energy levels like this. Here are the dot cross diagram and the stick diagram for hydrogen chloride. You'll find plenty of questions on covalent bonding in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some slightly more complicated covalent molecules, but you don't need to worry, they're not that difficult.